so check this out so we're at we're at my uh my new best friend's uh, um, garage facility. So essentially what we have here, essentially what we have is a, there's two sides. So this is the side that he currently leases. Uh, and then the next side is basically a mirror image of this. You know, obviously the, the interior is not the same, uh, but he's been leasing this space for 20 years. And this, this side is about 2000 square feet. The other side is about 2,000 square feet. And so the tenants next door are you know, closing up shop. And so now he has the opportunity to lease both sides. And so I flew up here to help sort of dream up you know, what we could do or what we could put in this place, uh, which is so, so cool. So I'm gonna take you through you know, some of the cars that are here, some of the cars that are coming here. Uh, we're gonna talk about list of cabinets. You can see a couple of them in the background. Uh, and then I'm just going to kind of dream up and think through, you know, what we're going to do to this place uh, to make it awesome. You know, I'm going to put Mosmatic and Krenzla and Lista and, and Kaiser and all kinds of cool stuff in here. And hopefully you guys through this process, hopefully you can help me think through, you know, what am I missing? What do we need to add? Uh, we're going to talk about flooring and walls and ceiling and lighting. And hopefully this, this will allow me to figure out, you know, lighting in our next endeavor since Fairlux no longer makes uh, T8 bulbs as far as I can tell. I've called them several times and I've received no callbacks so on what the deal is. Uh, but anyway, let's, uh, let's go look around and I'll kind of give you a tour and then we'll start talking specifics. And so when we walk in, uh, there's a bathroom here. Uh, and so this is an office area which we'll most likely retain. Uh, and so what will most likely happen is the, uh, we'll see if we can get over next door because it's locked. Uh, but next door is largely unfinished. And so we'll probably retain this as as an office. There's this you know storage area up above where all the extra leather and extra one-off Porsche parts are stored. Um, but this this is where we walk in, uh, and then he has some some list of cabinets, some you know sort of list of overflow. And and if you guys aren't familiar with with Lista, uh, the, you know this stuff is like you know it, it doesn't look like much. You know it doesn't look like uh, like it like it costs what it does and I'm gonna pursue mainly for this project and hopefully for future projects I'm gonna pursue these you know the, being a dealer for these cabinets but the you know the, the and they're largely overkill for a normal garage but if you'll notice you know the drawer slides they're just they're on a they're on a completely different level and then your ability to organize is pretty insane because you have all these tabs uh, but the main point of this, which we don't really need, is, I mean, I can literally stand in, in each drawer and jump up and down. They weigh, they, they hold 440 pounds of piece. Uh, but we'll talk about those a little bit more specifically when we go and look at the tools. So I don't know what we'll end up doing in here, uh, but my guess is whatever flooring we do in the main area will probably carry that uh, into here. Uh, and, you know, again, I'm not sure what we're going to do with the the wall treatments and ceiling, but I don't know that this side will change much in the beginning, uh, but the other side will, will most likely uh, see a, a significant overhaul and then we'll come in here and then work with this. So here's some of the cars that are here. We'll talk about those in a minute. So here's the entry to the facility. I didn't measure the door, but I think this is a 20 foot by 10 foot door, you know, not a roll up, normal, you know, gear driven or normal, whatever you call it, track driven door. Uh, and then that's the you know, storage area above where there's more one off stuff direct from Germany than you could possibly imagine that's up there. We could probably make a two hour video just on what's up there. But check this out this giant multiple hundred pound container came direct from Germany to hold these two very, very light carbon parts. So this is an under tray for a Porsche. And then that is a, doesn't look like carbon, but is a one-off carbon lip. It's pretty incredible. So that came in that crate. So that's the kind of cool stuff that we'll 
will be in this garage. So here's another list of cabinet um, on the wall, and then you gotta love uh, you know New Jersey code with all the you know fire boxes and all the stuff that has to be on the wall with you know fire ex fire extinguishers everywhere, you know gas on off emergency switches and and all kinds of stuff. So here's the the main layout and again the other side looks just like this you know so we have about uh, uh, I think it's 64 feet deep and 38 feet wide and we'll talk more about dimensions here in the future uh, this this side has a slight slope so obviously we're not going to be doing any washing in this part because to get a drain put in with New Jersey code is probably not going to happen. Um, but uh, we have in this area, which I think adds a little bit of, makes it a little bit more intimate with the cars because th this is where we'll most likely keep the cars on this side. And then the other side of the facility is where we'll probably do most of the work. Uh, but this this area here will be we'll, we'll, we'll most likely keep you know we'll keep the lower ceiling more sort of warmer light a bit more intimate to you know to to store the cars and to walk around the cars exactly. all right so you see we'll, we'll talk about the cars here because I'm sure some of you car freaks will want to know the story of these but really I think this the story, I mean, the, the, the real car, like the main car is not here. It's in California. Uh, the, it's a one of one America GS. And Mr. Chatham over here is talking to me about, you know, stuff that like his Porsche knowledge and history is off the charts and mine is weak at, at, at best. But that car uh, is, you know, originally weighs, what did you say, it was over 3,200 pounds? Yeah, 3,500 pounds, and now it's under 2,000, uh, and 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 largely due to carbon fiber, titanium, uh, and and other, other other, like for instance, the the suspension, magnesium. Uh, he's 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 whispering at me over here, to me trying to keep it straight. But that that car, which I'm sure next time I come up here, we'll, we'll hopefully be back here. Uh, that car is again a, very similar to the slant nose here, which is a you know one of one. But the but the parts that are on it, the beauty of it is many of the parts that he's developing and they're creating from scratch are are will will retrofit onto newer cars like 991 GT3s or GT3 RSs uh for instance uh they're developing technologies in 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 reducing caliper weight by 20 and 30 percent uh using using space age materials and you know the 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 idea here the idea of this garage and the cars is which fits what we all care about is just the story of obsession and you know I talked about this on the last podcast we talked about you know, or I talked about you know functional excellence and and everybody's willing to go to to a certain level and you know because as we approach perfection you know I, I just I just perfection I don't think is possible but but everybody's willing to go to great lengths like for instance with this you know this carbon tray for a for a for a 911 I mean or this carbon front splitter I mean not everybody's willing to go to that level but we you know the the cars that are here have a have a story about taking like for instance this club coupe is going back to Germany to get some modifications done to improve it to take it to the next level so this car which looks like a black 87 m6 is not not your regular you know m6 this 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 car if you'll notice all of the seams in the in the hood are are welded and perfected uh, this car was painted by a gentleman named by the name of Junior Conway, and so this car took over five years to to create. This is um, this is what they used to paint Duesenbergs with, and they okay. polish in those days with pumice stones, literally. So this is called nitra cellular cellulose lacquer. Nitro cellulose. Nitro, my nitro brain. There's uh, nit cellulose nitro lacquer. cellulose lacquer, yep. where. This this car took you know five years to paint 
because each layer now they didn't work on it for five years straight but no, it was at the shop for the multiple shop. years and so essentially they they lay this down layer by layer each layer needs to be completely sanded and i'm sure re-prepped for another layer so how many layers of paint does this sucker have on it probably 30 different layers yeah probably roughly 30 layers of paint It'll be interesting. We're gonna get. Uh, I talked. To, I talked to Larry Casella this morning, and uh, we'll have to turn him loose on this on thing. Probably not. It's really rare stuff. Yeah. So that's the M6, and then we have the M4 GTS. Which can I tell them about the seats in this thing? Yeah, sure. So those of you guys who are uh, who are M3 fans. Will recognize these seats, which aren't normally available, which is pretty sweet. So this, of course, is a you know matte finish GTS, and then this is a. I'm not even gonna. We'll, this will. This will. We'll, we'll maybe do a video someday on this car specifically, but this is a, obviously a slant nose turbo. It is a one of one. Bob could go on for hours about this thing. And then just a lowly Z8 in the corner here. And a nifty little little fan system, little exhaust system, so they can start the cars periodically in the garage and pull the exhaust fumes out. Alright, so let's get back to the to the question at hand here, because uh, you guys are seeing me fumble through the, uh, the the details of the cars, but let's let's talk more about the garage. All right, so here's the the basic premise behind what we're most likely going to be doing. So think about this. This will be phase two, right? So this this section of the garage or this area of the garage will be where we store the cars, right? And so. Here's my initial thought process, and you know, Bob and I just sort of thinking through and working through this stuff. So again, think about this side, but over there, right? So this wall, now we're gonna be working to see about these lolly columns and seeing about how to remove those, maybe putting an I-beam in, but some section of this wall is gonna be open. And then we'll have to deal with the fact that the ceiling in here, the drop ceiling, is much lower than the ceiling you know, next door. So we'll figure that out, whether it means we do something different with the drop ceiling in here. But again, th think about this as phase two, but the size and structure of this is, is identical. And so you guys saw the office when we came in. And so this, this building, all right, so this this sort of mirror image on the other side so this section of the wall you know some whatever portion we can take out this will be open right so this will be open to this side so we have easy access but still some segregation so the entire back wall will be an array of these list of cabinets which we'll talk about a little bit more here in a second we would most likely do on this side the working side of the garage is where we'll do swiss tracks you know, there's never going to be any major heavy machining uh, or, or you know, we're not doing massive engine rebuilds in this side of the garage, but they are going to, there's, there's some work is going to get done over here. So this will be rubber tracks across the back, so you'll have, you know, and the distance here would probably be, you know, three, roughly three feet past the list of cabinets. But, you know, we'd have a section, you know, across the back wall here, which would be rubber tracks. And then we'd have you know the Swiss tracks, Swiss tracks stuff throughout. And even in a high-end garage like this, I, I still think, I still think it's the the product to use. All the dirt falls under, it just stays cleaner. Uh, but then on this side, we'll do depending on how we have to deal with the the slope that runs out. This side will be you know will be most likely tile at some point. But again, that's phase two. So as you as you sort of think about this so on the side we're in the garage doors over here on the right but on the other side the garage doors on the left 
Uh, and so there's an office there, and what we'll most likely do is that office will come out so this is completely open, you know, completely, you know, completely rectangle. So we'll have all Swiss tracks in here, uh, and then on this side is where our washing area, and there won't be a ton of washing that's done, um, but when washing does need to get done, this will be state-of-the-art, just fantastic. Uh, the, the setup like I've always dreamed of, or actually very similar to my wash bay, where we'll have Ely hose reel mounted to the wall in case you ever need to do a, you know anything sort of garden hose. We'll have a bucket filler here. Uh, we'll probably store our you know OG buckets here. Uh, we'll have a deionized, integrated deionized and Krenzel on wall system, uh, and then I'll probably do the Mosmatic air dryer in here. So we'll have some form of a dual boom pole just outside the door. Now, you know, the issue with doing any kind of washing inside, you know, if he, if he was gonna wash as much as I wash, we probably wouldn't do washing inside. Uh, but because we're gonna be doing minimal washing, it, as long as they do it with the door open, I don't think we'll have any mildew or drying issues. Um, you know, if the water stays in this area uh, and, you know, is able to run out under the Swiss tracks, we should be just fine. You're know, not dealing with humidity issues that we have up north. We'd also have some stainless steel shelving on the wall in order to store and display all our cool stuff. And we'll probably actually have some sort of list of cabinet on the wall as well here with our you know, microfiber towels and things like that just to keep the towels from being exposed. And then depending on what it looks like over here is probably where we'll set up our, and, and you know I talked to Bob about this, but I'd like to display the you know, doing like a, a Kaiser Air Station or Ingersoll Rand type uh, a rotary screw air station, some you know Prevost drying, uh, um, so have the the air dryer uh, on on the wall, and then we'll have you know lines run out and drops you know put all over the place on the ceiling, on the wall, and and you know through throughout the the whole structure, and then we'll have uh, we'll have and I'm going to work on finding a solution for lighting, some sort of T8 uh, or what formerly T8 but LED solution. Uh, so that's the, the the general idea or the general thesis. So we're going to do Lista or continue Lista, uh, and this is actually a pretty neat color. You know, it's it's growing on me. It's it looks you know very primer like. You know, it reminds me of when my dad painted his GTO. There was this color primer underneath, um, but it I don't know. It's it's kind of a neat color. I think it will look really cool with you know gray and black accents. It makes me think we'll probably do a mohawk lift as well, uh, so that we have you know we have that that kind of normal you know normal look or that clean look that I'm so fond of. But here's the you know here's the scoop on you know Lista. Check this out. These are all machined titanium weight saving parts. Just incredible. And so, you know, the basic idea behind list of cabinets, these are, you know, largely unnecessary for any kind of, you know, normal consumer grade garage. But they're, you know, again, look how far they come out. They come out, you know, all the way out. These are, you know, roughly four to five times the cost of Sabre. But you can see the construction difference. I mean, the drawer, if I, if I lay into this, you know, the whole cabinet's come and fallen over before the drawer even flexes. Each drawer is rated at 440 pounds. You know, the aluminum guides, they're all labelable, so you can put a, a labeling system on the edge. Uh, but they're just, it's, it's like, I think of it as like NASA grade. And then Bob has all the, uh, the FACOM tool, these French made tools that he got from, uh, if you guys remember, uh, if you guys are into garages or garage journal, one of my all time heroes is uh, Steve from Ultimate Garage. Uh, he actually did all this stuff. Uh, so he came out and, and outfitted Bob with all of this, this setup of Facom tools, which I'm sure were insanely expensive, but super, super cool. Really, really neat stuff. And then we have, I've never seen these in person, but these retract a hose reels. I think we'll probably do all Prevost stuff or redo this in Prevost and notice, because Steve from Ultimate Garage was involved years ago, these have all of the, uh, these are the original Prevost uh, fittings for, you know, 
for compressed air. So we may be able to come off of some of the, the plumbing, the compressed air plumbing in here. So we'll have to have to figure that out. It's stressing me out a little bit trying to figure that, figure that stuff out. But anyway, back to the list of cabinets. I think the ultimate goal here, or at least my dream in this in this setup, is that we're gonna do an entire like 30 plus foot wall. This is, um, these are th roughly 40 feet wide. So we're gonna do like a, a 35 foot wall with you know some of the taller cabinets on the sides. And then we'll have plenty of you know storage on the bottom. And uh, I don't know, I, I really like this color. You know, Bob says we can get rid of it if we wanted to, but I think this color is fantastic. So I'm gonna I'm gonna reach out the list of this week and you know look at becoming a dealer. Um, mainly because I want I'd like to have a high end and a you know like a mid end solution. So you know Saber just doesn't fit the level of this garage. Although it's, you know, it's great. These are the best, I think. Again, largely unnecessary for what we're doing, but you know, these are the, these are the GT3 of, 911 GT3 of, of cabinets. But man, it's just awesome, look at this. Get this nice out of the way. Just look how cool that is. Makes me nervous that close to the Z8. And then just the, you know, the storage or the, each, each, uh, each individual drawer is insane. But again, very functional. There's a certain sense of beauty in the function of these cabinets, but they are rather simple. Seeing these in person really makes me want them in you know, whatever my next garage is. We'll see. Maybe um, maybe my status in this world is, is upgrading. <laughs> Hopefully, I'll be able to afford them someday. Or be able to justify affording them, I guess I should say. So anyway, that's the, that's the initial plan. Uh, I, I need to make a product list and then really think through the logistics of you know how this would how this would go down. Uh, again, I'll probably have to come back up here because we'll need to when we have full access when they're cleaned out. They're not completely cleaned out of the other side, uh, but the you know, the general idea here is that we'll have a car display area, car storage area, and then a on the other side, you know, a walk through so you can walk from, from side to side. Uh, we're hoping to have, we'll have some more space to probably go three cars wide because you won't have, you, know, you won't have the, the cabinets or anything in the way, but three cars wide so you can open the doors and walk all the way around. Uh, and then just, a, you know, again, a general uh, work area with the lift. Uh, because Bob intends to, you know, a lot of these cars, a lot of these titanium lightweight parts that he's developing, uh, we'll go on the you know the M4. We'll go on you know some of the other cars, the the slant nose to you know weight some of these weight reduction techniques that he's developing, just out of just for fun, you know, just because he can, which is super cool. And then the the club sports going over to Germany to get some modifications done, some interior design changes and stuff like that. force pulls you back, your foot naturally comes off the gas. You have to keep your foot to the floor, the floor, foot to the floor.